high. So, now we will have a look at what is PASS theory of intelligence or I can say PASS theory of intelligence. Now, prior to this theory, there was G factor theory, okay, which was basically used for different psychological researches. But in 1975, the initial work of Das, Kidby and German, they decided to bring up this theory based on their neuropsychological research conducted on humans. Now, what exactly that theory stated? That theory stated that the different parts of a brain, in fact, perform different type of functions, but which are interrelated to each other. G factor theory proposed there a general intelligence factor which is responsible for all the type, all type of intelligences, right? But that theory wasn't a factor theory. It was a neuropsychological theory which stated that the brain functions all these type of intelligences or all these type of processes using its different parts, okay? So, one part is responsible for one type of function, the other part is responsible for another type of function and so on. So, for example, you can say the left temporal lobe that performs the task of your written or verbal communication. Any, any defect or any impairment in this part of a brain affects your verbal ability or the written ability. Okay? But the damage to the adjacent part of the left temporal lobe will not affect that ability. In fact, the another type of ability, suppose for example, this understanding ability might be affected. You won't be able to understand, you will be able to read and write properly, but you won't be able to understand what is written. Okay? So, different parts of a brain, they perform different functions. Now, let us first elaborate this PASS, that is the PASS theory. P stands for planning, A stands for attention arousal, S stands for simultaneous processing and last S stands for successive processing. Okay? These are the different abilities in which the intelligence was divided according to this theory. Let us look into all these aspects one by one, planning. The planning part basically decides upon how the problem will be solved or uh, how the task will be completed. Suppose if you are given a problem or a particular task, what are the different ways of solving that problem or where, what are the different ways of completing that task, what are the different problems we can face while completing the task, how to tackle the problems, how much time will be required for it. All this planning part is done by this ability. Okay? And this ability is basically done by the frontal lobe of your brain. Okay? So, the next ability is attention arousal. Now, the attention arousal is basically done by the brain stem part of your brain. Now, this actually prioritizes different stimulus which you receive. Uh, consider for example, you are sitting in an examination hall and uh, there is a lot of noise going around in the other classroom. So, Few of the students will be able to focus on their exam and will be able to write their exam without any problem. Few of the students will be affected by the noise and few of the students will be affected partially by the noise. Okay? Now that depends upon this ability. Okay? If you are strong at this ability, then you will be able to focus well on the exams. So there are two types of stimulus which you are receiving. One from your eyes and your hands, what you are writing, what you are watching the question and the other which you are hearing from your ears. Okay? The brain stem decides what is more important. It prioritizes what is important. Either that noise is important or this paper is important. Based on that priority, your brain functions and you perform the task what you do. Okay? You can see that different person uh, respond differently to these type of stimulus. right? The person who is not able to prioritize, okay? they suffer from ADD that is attention deficiency disorder. They, these are the students or these are the people who are not able to focus on a particular task given the normal conditions. Okay? You can see it happens in many cases in students especially where they are not able to focus on their studies just because there is a small noise somewhere going outside. Okay? They just find a reason to get distracted. They get distracted very easily. So, this was all about attention arousal. The next one is simultaneous planning. Simultaneous, the name itself suggests working together. Now, there are more than one stimulus which we received at a time 
just in the case of previous case and how to club them together to form some meaningful information that is simultaneous processing. This is basically used when in English comprehensions when we the complete passage or a statement means a single idea. Okay? So, if you have to remember a big answer of a question then we just remember the keywords that keywords denote the complete answer for us. We are able to write the complete answer. Okay? Exactly the same way if you hold an object if this object this object has specific weight this object has the temperature this object has different size. So, based on these different stimuli I receive from my eyes my skin or whatever it is I can relate all the information if the ball is of metal ball of course the temperature will be cold. Okay? So, I can relate the different type of stimulus which I have received from my different senses and then I can store the information. Okay? Basically these functions are performed by the occipital or the parietal lobes of the brain. Okay? And the last one is of course the successive processing. Successive means the arrangement of objects in a particular order. Suppose there are letters arrangement in alphabetical order that is that ability is the successive ability or I can say arrangement of numbers in ascending order descending order, arrangement of objects in increasing or decreasing size or whatever the rule we state. Okay? So, that is done by this type of ability. And this type of ability is basically done by the frontal and the temporal lobe of the brain. Okay? So, these are the four abilities in which the intelligence can be divided according to this theory. Now, again the person who is weak in the last two abilities that is simultaneous and successive abilities, they are not able to perform daily tasks properly. For example, tying a shoelace. Okay? So, the students are not able to understand two different type of stimulus together and which one should go first, okay? not able to prioritize what is the perfect order to tie the lace. Now, few of them find such type of basic operations very difficult to perform. Such type of disorders can be dyslexia or something. Okay? So, this is all about the past theory.